I've got an emergency engine's rough. Staying live, staying live, Dan Greider. It's May 2, 2023. This is a special video I want to tell you about this. My friend Robert made a takeoff in a Cessna 150. I never knew Robert, never met him, never heard of him, but I went and found him. He's the guy that's uh, about a week ago made a takeoff in a Cessna 150. had an engine failure at about 400 feet. The impossible turn. Was it possible or was it impossible? Because of that, Robert and I had a conversation. I went and found him, and I built this board here. I'm going to tell you all about this because this is fascinating. You are going to understand AQP. This is a very short video. I'm going to interview Robert in person. We're going to sit down at the table and talk about what happened on his engine failure. Could you have done the same thing? Would you have been ready? I appreciate your support. Airborne Animal Rescue is my website. You can help me with a dollar or two dollar donation per video that you like. If you truly like it, I appreciate your support. Don't break the bank. Just give me a dollar or two dollars if you appreciate these. Take a tremendous amount of time to go find a guy like this. Get the ATC tape, pull it, go find him, interview it, edit it, upload it. It takes a lot of time. This is a valuable video. You're going to like this one. And here's Robert. I'm going to jump right to this live in-person interview that I conducted with Robert. And he is still alive. Let's go meet Robert. Down here at Atlanta Hartsfield International Airport with my friend Robert Searfoss. Here's, here's the best handshake bump I've had in a long time because Robert is alive. <laughs> you are alive. You had an incident in your 150. You and I have been talking about this. You had an engine failure at PDK off of runway 21 right, is that correct? 21 right, uh, the engine broke off a valve, went through the top of the piston, immediate, extremely rough engine. Rough engine, and so I got the audio tape of that. We're gonna play that in, in a second here uh, of, of what happened there. Uh, tower set to 63406. Engine's running very rough, I'm gonna do a uh, 180 here. I... This this one's fascinating because Robert's alive. Um, he he made a 180 turn. Actually, you made more like a 190 to 200 degree turn. You you turned all the way around. So take it off a 21 right. You made it around and land and landed on three three right three you, three right. It's the opposite parallel going yeah. the opposite direction. So these are always interesting to do because. It involves the good, the bad, and the ugly, and Robert has agreed to jump on camera here. And Robert, I've already taken a look at this thing. You you did a lot of good things. You did a right thing, a lot of right things. We've talked through, there's probably a couple things that you might like to pass on to the next guy that you might do different now that you've had this. Um, some mistakes, some good things, some things that you might have forgotten about or things like that. So we're going to talk through that. Um, some people call that me beating you up. I'm not really beating you up. I think you're a great guy. And every time I get to interview a person like that, like you, that survived it, you do kind of take a little bit of a brow beating because people go, well, what did he do that for? What, what, how come, how come, well, you did it. You survived. You're you're alive, and I think the viewers that view a, a, an interview like this appreciate you going on camera, being able to say this is what I did. And so we're going to talk through that. You, you, it's a Cessna 150. You took off. You had your girlfriend with you at about 400 feet. That's where that valve let loose. Tell me, take it from there. Okay, I had every every part of the uh, run up the uh, full throttle run down the runway everything what seemed right the uh, sound of the engine right the the takeoff right all of that seemed absolutely right i do remember telling my friend that look at that wind sock yeah that we've got quite a bit of wind here and it'll be bumpy yeah so I remember seeing the wind, the wind sock was, 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 was there. Yes. And so I had in my mind, there's wind. Yes. And so as, as the plane took off, sound, it sounded right. Everything was fine. Yep. And I guess I'm think I'm guessing around 400 feet up immediately, extremely shaking engine. It sounded horrible. The power was gone. 
and at that point I pushed forward slightly on the yoke and called uh, the tower uh, rough engine and I'm calling an emergency and uh, as as you have the tape and I've listened to it I did say to the tower I think I have altitude and airspeed to return yeah you said you said I have rough engine you didn't mention altitude you, you said I have airspeed oh airspeed yes okay, you yeah. said I got my airspeed which tells me you were conscious of your airspeed uh, tower Cessna 63406 Engine's running very rough. I'm going to do a uh, 180 here. I've still got airspeed. I can make the uh, the uh, runway. I've got an emergency. Engine's rough. Which gets me back to where we're at. Now, you've got 3,000 hours. You're a private pilot, no instrument rating. You've been flying for 30 years. Yeah. You've got a tremendous amount of experience. Tell me where in the FAA curriculum, as far as getting a pilot's license or recurrent training, where in the FAA, where has FAA ever told you, Robert, about this scenario that happened to you? Where is that in FAA curriculum? It's not there. It's not there. Engine failure on takeoff uh, is not part of the curriculum as far as I know. No, it's, it's, it's not in there. Now, you were telling me that you were kind of a leg up on this. You were one step ahead because you had done a little bit of research. You had looked at some accidents, and you've done some hangar flying. You've talked to other people. You were kind of had this in your mind, and your father always left you with with some important words. Your father was a World War II pilot. What were the words that your father was most important to him? What did he always tell you? After I started flying, and you know, my dad had been an instructor and pilot, and when he and I would talk, uh, it, virtually every time we said goodbye, uh, he would say. Keep your airspeed. Keep your airspeed. And and sometimes it was just airspeed. Airspeed. He would just simply say yeah. airspeed. Airspeed. And then you know then I would go on back to Atlanta right. and say goodbye to him. And he, his last word is airspeed. <laughs> and so uh, I think that may have even been part of my situation. Plus, a, as you mentioned, I enjoy hangar flying. Right. Ta- talking with other pilots, talking about flying to me is one of the pleasures of right. aviation right. and uh, all the way from you know uh, invention of the plane what the Wright brothers did yep. how they did it uh, different airplanes listening to other pilots talk about their experiences to me that's a huge part of aviation at least to me flying the airplane sure that's the great part and all that but equally is what everybody calls hangar flying it's yes. very valuable well it turned out to be valuable for you in this instance you you drew upon a tremendous amount of uh your father's wisdom your hangar flying some research that you had done you've been thinking about this and in the time of crisis you told me that you don't really remember part of that sequence in fact before i played the tape you had no idea what you said on the radio or if you said anything. you said you thought you told them that you're coming back but you didn't know what you said and that's kind of normal because crisis befell you you were handed this crisis and it happened instantly you went from normal to abnormal instantly is that correct yep so your father uh and some hangar flying uh, really really helped you on this but you took when you made the takeoff, you pushed your throttle forward. Everything was normal. Yep. At what instant did you transition from normal to abnormal? The it, in, instantly the engine went extremely rough, and of course the sound of it changed dramatically too. But, so, but so that wasn't a gradual thing. It it did it, this. It, there was no warning. There's no warning. And that that it was a total surprise. Everything seemed absolutely fine, and then instantly the engine got extremely rough yep. and lost power. Exactly. So I'm really glad that you survived. Um, I am too. <laughs> I mean, it's it's really good. You you made the 180 and and you made it. Frankly, you got lucky on a couple things here. Yeah. Don't you think? Yes, I do. I think that I had the unlucky part was the engine yes. puke, puking on yes. me. Yes. But the lucky part was I did have the wind. 
I had a, a you I turned got, left into a very strong headwind. I turned into a headwind and that wind pushed me back. Uh, yes, I, it delayed your ground speed, allowed you a much shallower angle of a bank and allowed you to complete the turn radius into into a headwind and and it, and it became successful. But the thing that you were telling me that you used to do, you used to make takeoffs thinking uh, about you had something on your checklist like fly the plane, I'm, I'm ready for this. I'm, uh, that used to be part of your mantra at all times on every takeoff. Was that thinking and that mantra and that checklist a part of this takeoff? The the part that's hard to admit is that I had gotten a little complacent about I've had hundreds of takeoffs and landings at PDK, hundreds of landings at other airfield takeoffs and landings. Right. And recently, I've actually not been thinking about what if something goes really wrong yes. on this takeoff? Right. Now, I used to have that on my checklist. The last line of my checklist uh, had two, 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 two thoughts. Fly the plane, land the plane. And I used to say that to myself before uh, going out and, and going but to throttle. But you did not do that on I this didn't, one. No, I didn't. And I'm, I'm, I'm uh, it, well, I'd like to think it was still in my head somewhere right because uh well, let me ask you this yeah. going forward are you going to add it back it's already back on my <laughs> it, it will be on my checklist in bold letters as my last thing fly Do you the think plane other people land. could consider it adding it to their checklist and adding it to their routine and getting out of their complacency and being ready for this scenario to happen to them do you think other people should follow your example and you're about to change your checklist you're about to revert back to the way you used to fly, aren't you? Yeah, and, and I've got two words for that. What's that? They'd better. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to, and I recommend that very strongly, that the last line of a checklist say, fly the plane, land the plane, you could have a problem. However you want to modify your checklist that's comfortable for you, the way you think about yeah. it, the way you want, I don't care what it is. I want you to be ready so that there's no surprise. And I got these pieces of paper on the table. This is a little jigsaw puzzle that we're going to do yeah. here. And we're going to split it right down the middle. I'll take a picture so everybody can see. Right. But uh, uh, we're going to put them on one side or the other. Here's no surprise. Here's FAA. Here's abnormal. Here's AQP. Here's ACS. Here's Dan. Here's normal. Here's. What are you doing here? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to show you the difference All here right. between, and we're going to draw a clear line down here. Here's initial. Here's recurrent. Here's normal. So each one of these elements, the ACS or the PTS that got you your pilot's license, that's a function of the FAA, and in all your maneuvers, they're void of surprise. There's no surprise in any of the FAA stuff. They're the normal environment, and you get it during your initial training. Dan says we use AQP. The FAA does ACS. I do AQP. There's no surprise. What you had was a surprise. When this happened to you, at that instant, you were surprised. Yeah. You had to have been. You encountered surprise, which isn't anywhere over on this side of the table. You went from a normal situation to an abnormal situation. Yeah. See what I mean? This is your initial training. All of this stuff should be in recurrent training. Pilots should be briefed on this and should get recurrent training and think about this more often. It's a clear dividing line between the two. I can't go over to the other side and tell FAA what to do. All I can do is make videos to show people this is the scenario. I didn't invent this, but this is a thing called AQP. This is scenario-based training. It involves training for things that are going to surprise you. See how that works? What What are the AQP acronym? What, what do these letters stand for? AQP is Advanced Qualification Program. 
it was, right. it was a program developed by the airlines that simply said we're going to train our airline guys to be ready for the surprise things that are going to happen to them they developed a whole program and it solved a problem for them many years ago aqp is simply a philosophy that says during recurrent training not initial mm -hmm. during recurrent training or even now this is recurrent training for you i'm actually giving you recurrent training right yeah, now that's right i'm giving you some information on a way to think about we're giving recurrent training to 100,000 other pilots that are going to watch robert and say robert's still alive how he made the 180 how is this possible maybe i should think about being more ready myself we're actually providing recurrent training to these people we're getting them ready for the abnormal that's going to occur to them the faa is never going to cross this line and come over to my dark side i'm not going to cross the line and go over to the faa side i can't i can't i can't do it it seems to me that i would i would say to other pilots that some uh, stronger awareness that something can go wrong ought to be part of it. And I, I will say that I did in my early flying days, I had a, a stronger sense of it, but I've had so many yeah. hours of, yeah. of uh, flying without incident. incident. Yes. Yeah, everything seemed fine. And, yeah. and uh, but, uh, the surprise was that uh, a friend of mine, uh, John Downing, says uh, occasionally I would say to him, my plane's running really good. Yeah. My, oh, my plane's running so good. Yeah. And his comment back to me is, John says, they all run good until they don't. Until they don't. And that is something that I would say to every pilot that may be watching this and to myself again, they run good until they don't. And you better be at least tuned in to the fact that you might have a plane that, that, that don't. Yep. And the scenario <coughs> that you encountered was a loss of thrust on takeoff. Did you know that there's about 19 or 20 other scenarios that could happen to you? Those are AQP scenarios that pilots, this, this isn't the only possibility of killing yourself in the airplane. There's 19. Thanks. Other, there's 19 <laughs> other good ways to do it. Oh, great. <laughs> yes. I would, I would do a little bit of research yeah. and study up on what are the other common ways of killing yourself in your Cessna 150. Uh, <laughs> How about that? Thank huh? you so much. Yes. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you uh, taking the time, and we're going to um, jump out of here. But, uh, Robert, uh, yeah. let, let me mention just, just something about this to other pilots that, that, that may be watching. I think that I was lucky, and I also want to say that consciously and constantly in my mind at this time do not stall this plane i i consciously yes went forward with the yoke yes i had downward angle of attack, angle of attack yes. down down pitch you did and i did that very quickly yes and i would say that that was a factor in in making it back absolutely my only question to you was was your negative angle of attack lowering the nose, did you get that from government or non-government? Where did that come from? Hangar flying and non-government uh, and, and thinking it it's not in the it's not in the formal training. It's not. It's in the informal training when you talk with right. a lot of pilots, but it, in my opinion, it it needs to be part of the training is that when you have engine difficulty, yes. go forward on the yoke. Yes. Never pull back. Yes. And you you know we talked about this earlier. Yes. The old saying, if you want to go up, pull back a little bit. If you want to go down, keep pulling back. Yeah. And uh, I, I really want to say this again, that I think that I had a lot of luck. The wind was extremely favorable to me, and it pushed me back. And my decision was that at least I want to avoid what was straight ahead, which mm. is a which is a shopping center and buildings, but to not stall, not to stall. not turn too steeply. Yes. A shallow, shallow turn yep. was the factor. You, well, you did it. I, I see a lot of turnbacks that don't work out. I see a lot of loss of thrust on takeoff or it doesn't work out, does not work out. So this is an absolute pleasure to get to talk to you. 
Uh, you're alive. You get to go take your girlfriend out to dinner tonight. Everything's good. You made it. And it's an important lesson. I appreciate you. You know, I, I we talked through a couple of things that you probably could have done different, but that's that's all good. That's not saying you're less of an individual. That's just saying, you know, in the debrief, I've thought about this. Yeah. Here's some important stuff that I can help my fellow pilot with from and I think people appreciate that. Engine trouble, something not right, go forward. Push. Push forward. Push. Do not pull back. Yes. And and uh, that's the kind of thing that my dad always told me. Airspeed. Airspeed. I like it. Well, that's it. Um, we're uh, we're going to uh, wrap this up, and I'll include a couple other little graphics with it. Yeah. And uh, I sure appreciate you coming out, and it's a, it's, a, it's just a pleasure to get to meet you, sir. I'm glad to share the... Uh, the fact that I'm glad to be here. Yes. (laughs) Thanks. Thank you. So there you have it. And we, the cards that we put on the table, I want to show you, I've now put these same cards on this board here. I'll show you a picture of this, but this is the clear distinction. There's a line down the middle here. This is FAA. This is Dan. FAA does initial. Dan does recurrent. FAA does ACS. Dan does AQP. FAA does normal scenarios. AQP does abnormal scenarios. FAA does no surprise, Dan does all surprises. FAA does training, Dan does conditioning. FAA does evaluation. We don't do any evaluation. We just we just condition you, but there's no evaluation. All they want to do in, in FAA is give you an evaluation in a piece of plastic. There's no awareness in FAA. Under AQP, your sense of awareness is increased. There's the line down the middle. What a clear distinction between the two. Uh, on this and I appreciate Robert uh, meeting with me and it took a little while to find him and get him tracked down I appreciate your support airborne animal rescue is the website. You can help me with Zelle PayPal Cash app or Venmo one dollar and I sure appreciate your help I'm gonna get this video up and on there and this one's gonna stay on there. This is a very Important video. I appreciate you following along and listening to this. I want you to stay alive out there in your little airplane for my tiny little Itty bitty fledgling YouTube channel, Dan Grider. Probable cause.